Okay, we're still in chapter one on the whole numbers. Now we're in section 1.6, solving equations by addition and subtractions. So we first start with defining a variable. What is a variable? It's a symbol, usually a letter, that stands for a value that could vary. So different equations are gonna have different variables. One equation might see an X, one might see a Y. Some equations we'll get to eventually have an X and a Y in them. So that, that's what that is. It's a, some kind of a symbol or letter. Now, what is an equation? Well, that's a mathematical statement that equates two mathematical expressions. Now, the solution is a numerical value that satisfies the equation. And so we have to first kind of think about, okay, well, what is an expression? Well, an expression is something like, you know, you get a four plus two times the quantity x minus one, or x squared plus two x minus three, or four x plus three y minus two. All these are expressions. Now, to make it an equation, what we have to do is we have to add an equal sign. Once we have an equal sign, then we have an expression on one side, an expression on the other side. Now, 11, that's an expression. That's just a single term, same with seven and zero. Then what we can do is we can solve these equations for the variable given. So in this case, we'll solve for x, we'll solve for x, and we'll solve for x. Once we've solved for that, that's called our solution. And then to determine if a solution is truly correct, what we're going to do is we're going to plug that number back into our original equation. And then we're going to simplify both sides. And if we get a true statement as a result, then it is a solution. So for example, is y equals 4 a solution of 3 plus y equals 7? So this is the equation we're solving. And we want to know, is this solution a solution of that equation. Well, what we do is we take and say, well, instead of y, we're going to plug in a 4 there. So 3 plus 4 equals 7. Simplify the left. 7 equals 7. And that's true. So yes, it is a solution. Okay. Now what about this one? Here we have x is equal to 15. Is that a solution of x minus 10 equals 22? Well, again, we're going to plug 15 in for x. So here we have 15 minus 10 equals 22. Well, 15 minus 10 is 5. And does that equal 22? Well, that's false. So not a solution. Okay. And so what happens is you're going to solve these equations down. You're going to get to an answer. Maybe you got a 4 in this case. Maybe you got the 15 in this case. And you can always check to see if it's right. You plug it back in, work through it, and if you get a true statement, then yes, it is. If you've got 15 somehow, you, you subtracted wrong or you did something wrong, and you plug it back in and simplify, and all of a sudden you're like, hmm, I must have done something wrong. That's false, so that's not a solution. I need to start my question over. So there's really no excuses on getting these wrong if when you do your check on this, um, you do everything correctly, then you'll find out if you have a true solution or not a solution. Now, what are equivalent equations? Well, if two equations have the same solution set, they're considered equivalent. So, for example, let's say we have the equation x plus 3 equals 9 and the equation x equals 6. And we want to know, are these equivalent? Well, that's really kind of like checking our solution. If you think about it, we had two equations up here, and if they were equivalent, then it was a solution. And so that's what we're going to do here, too. We're going to take x equals 6, plug it in here, and see if we get a true statement. So we'll take 6 plus 3 equals 9, 9 equals 9. That's true, so they're equivalent. And they're equivalent equations. Okay. And so that's how you do it. And so that's also called kind of the check or to see if it really works or not, okay? And so that's first off checking your solution to be sure if it's true or not, and then seeing if they're equivalent equations or not. So let's do some examples. Here we have uh, one where it says x equals 6 and x minus 5 equals 10. Are they equivalent? Well, let's check. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in x equals 6 into the second equation, and so we have 6 minus 5 equals 10. Well, 6 minus 5 is 1 equals 10. Well, that's false, so they're not equivalent equations, okay? 
And that would also show that that's not a solution to this equation here as well. So we've kind of done two things at once. We've shown that the check doesn't work, and we've also shown that they're not equivalent equations. All right, so what do we, how do we solve this equation? So, you know, we've been doing checks so far. How do we actually solve this equation? Well, to solve simple equations, basically what we're going to do is we're going to either add or subtract the same value from each side. And when we do that, that doesn't change the solution. So if we start off with a equals b, then we could say add c to both sides of the equation. So we're adding the same thing to both sides. And when we do that, we're going to get the same equivalent equation. And so what we can do then is we'll uh, simplify that down, and then we'll get some final thing. And it's going to look something like this when we get done. We started with this, and we're going to get something like that. Now, in this case, we did something wrong along the way. But if we had done something right, then that should be the solution. And so as long as we add the same thing to both sides, we're good. We can also subtract the same things. We could subtract c from both sides, and we get an equivalent equation. Because once we subtract c from both sides, we're again, we're going to come back to some x equals 6 as our solution. And we're going to get the original equation. And if those two are equivalent, basically, if that's the solution to this, then we can show that you know adding or subtracting the same thing from both sides keeps this solution set the same. So how do we do that? Well, for this example, what we're going to do is we have a 3 plus y equals 12. So our variable is y. So that means we want to keep that here. So we want to get rid of this 3. So how do we get rid of 3? Well, I subtract it from both sides. Now, the book says do everything in line, but I think that's a little more difficult in the manner is because if you go and you start lining up things to subtract, you know, when you're in line, you would have had 3 minus 3 plus y equals 12 minus 3. And okay, yeah, those cancel nicely and it's not too hard. But 12 minus 3, sometimes we want to see what it looks like top to bottom. We don't want to see left, right. So even though the book says don't do it this way, this is how I do it just so I can see what I'm doing to both sides and I can easily do the subtraction then. Well, when I do that, 3 and 3 cancel. And on the left, then I just have y. Then 12 minus 3, well, if we have to borrow, that's going to give us 9. So we could, you know, borrow it and had 12 here. It doesn't matter. Either way, you're still going to get 12. But that goes in there 9 times. And so that is what we say is our solution. And so this and this, we're saying, are equivalent equations. Now, does it work? Well, what's 3 plus 9 equals 12? 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 equals 12. Yes, it works. So that's really our check to see if we have the correct solution. Now, what about here? Well, here we had a negative 12. We have x minus 12 equals 6. So to get rid of a negative 12, we have to add 12. Okay. So here we wanted to get rid of a positive 3, so we had to subtract 3. Here we wanted to get rid of a negative 12, so we have to add the opposite. And so when we add the opposite here, we get x. 16 plus 12 is 18, and so we're saying 18 is our solution, or we could also say those are two equivalent equations. Now let's check. If we plug that back in, 18 minus 12 equals 6. Well, 18 minus 12 is 6. It does check out, so that is the solution. All right, so that's solving the simple problems. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start and look into word problems. And there's a five steps for problem solving. First, you want to familiar, familiarize yourself with the situation. So basically, you're going to carefully read and reread the problem until you understand what you're being asked to do. Okay, so that's the key. Sometimes you might read it once and you're good to go. Sometimes you might have to reread it and reread it and reread it and reread it until you really understand Oh, that's what they mean. And so don't feel bad if you have to read this more than one time, okay? Sometimes I, if I'm in a hurry, I won't do anything. I'll read it the first time, do it, and then go, whoa, that's not what they were asking. And then I have to start the whole problem again. So you've wasted all that time doing the problem. And if you just reread it a couple of times, so you would have saved time. All right, then you're going to draw a diagram or see if there's a formula that applies to the situation. So sometimes you might be working with a rectangle or a triangle or a square, and being able to draw the diagram is helpful. Or if you know you're using some kind of a uh, formula, then that's nice to know as well. 
then we need to assign a variable to the unknown. So maybe they're saying, what is side you know, L, you know? So then we can say the length is side L. And so we can assign L as their unknown variable. Then what we have to do is we translate the word problem to an equation using that variable that we assigned. Then we solve the equation. Then we check our answer in the original wording if the of the problem to make sure it's correct. So really, we're going back in and saying, hey, let's check it and make sure it works. And then we state the answer to the problem clearly with appropriate units. Okay, so that's, that's what we do in overview. So let's look at this one. So it says 10 more than a certain number is 22. Find the number. All right, so do we remember all of our things? So we have words in equation, uh, words in a sentence that re represent things. So is represents equals, okay? And more than, in this case, that represents addition. So it's going to be more than, so you're going to add more to it. And so then from there, we just have to find the number. So this is the unknown, okay? So since that certain number is unknown, let's call it x. So we'll say x is equal to the unknown number, okay? Now what we can do is we can write our thing. 10 more than some number x is 22. So what we're gonna do is 10 more than a number, so we have to start with the number, 10 more than that, add 10, is 22, okay? So we've rewritten this sentence into this equation. 10 more than a certain number is 22. And now it's just an equation that we can solve. So we can subtract 10 from both sides. We learned how to do that already. Well, 10 minus 10 is uh, zero, so we just have x here. And that's equal to 22 minus 10. Well, if we subtract two minus zero is two, two minus one is one, we get x is equal to 12, okay? So now we have to check it. So if we take 12 plus 10, does that equal 22? So let's check our sentence here. 10 more than 12 is 22. So 12 plus 10 is 22. So we know it's the right answer. And so now we can say that the certain number or the unknown number is 12. So that would be then, if we wrote it out as a sentence, what our solution would be. If they just wanted it as x equals 12 or, or whatever your variable was, then, then you could do that. But writing it out in a sentence is sometimes what they require. And so that's what we would do if that was the uh, key requirement. What about this one? Tyler deposits $325 to his savings account. After the deposit, the balance is 1705. What was the original balance in account before the deposit? Well, so what we wanna do is it's asking what was the original balance, okay? So the original balance is what's unknown. So let's call that X. So X is the original balance. Now, what does the problem say? Well, he's depositing, and if you deposit, you're adding to. So again, another word for adding is deposit, and if you had withdrawal, you'd be subtracting, so kind of, you know, the opposite. So we're adding this to this, and then that says the balance then is this, okay? So we have all we need, and now we can just kind of basically um, add everything or subtract it or whatever we do and write an equation. And so if we do that, we have X, we added $325. And then after that, the balance is 1705. Now this is a simple equation we can solve. We just subtract 325 from both sides. Okay, so when we do that, that's gone. Now it says x is equal to what? Well, here 5 minus 5 is 0. Now we'll have to borrow here, so that's a 6. That becomes 10. 10 minus 2, that's 8. 6 minus 3 is 3. 1 minus 0 is 1. And that was in dollars, so again, making sure you have the right units. And so what it says then is the original balance was $1,380. So if we write that in a sentence before we check it, we could do that. The original 
balance was 1380. Now let's check it. 1380 plus 325 equals 1705. Well, again, you might want to write that underneath 325. So then you can add. So 5 and 0 is 5. 8 and 2 is 10. Carry 1. That's 6 plus 1 is 7. And then we have a 1. So 1705 equals 1705. That checks. And so that does give us that original balance of $1,380. All right, so this one has a triangle. It says the perimeter of a triangle is 55 feet. It has two sides measuring 14 feet and 13 feet. Find the length of the third side. Well, let's first draw a triangle and see what we have and what we can label, okay? So we know that two sides, one measures 14 feet, so let's call that one 14 feet. And another one's 13 feet, so that's 13 feet. And the last one is what we're looking for, find the length of the third side. So let's call that x, okay? So x equals length of third side, okay? Now what do we know? Well, we know the perimeter is equal to 55 feet, okay? Now what's the perimeter of a triangle? Well, the perimeter is basically gonna add each of the sides up, so it's gonna be 14 plus 13 plus x. So that's how we find the perimeter. Well, we already know the perimeter is 55, so we can replace the p with 55. And now we have our simple equation that we have to solve. Now we could subtract each one of these individually, or what we could do is we could add these two together and then subtract that as a whole. So what is 14 plus 13? Well, that's a seven and that's a two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract 27 because it's a positive 27 here, so we need to subtract it. And so we'll subtract 27 here as well. Well, when we do that, that's all gone, so that equals x. And over here, now we can do our subtraction. Well, if we have to, we have to borrow. That becomes a four, that's a 15. Well, seven plus eight is 15, so that gives us eight here. Four minus two is two. And so x equals, it looks like 28 feet, okay? So if we say that, we can say the third side is 28 feet. And now let's check it. Well, we had 14 plus 13 is 27. Now let's add 28. That's 14, 15, 2, 4, 5. 55. Well, that's what we said it initially was, is 55 feet. And so that does give us the correct answer of 28 feet. Okay, so that's all I have for the lecture part, and I'll come back in a little bit with some more examples.